Drawing the development of a shape, like this square-based prism, is the same as drawing a plan for this shape flat, so that we can then take that plan and fold it up so that it forms this prism. So if we had to take this prism and fold it out, that would show us the plan that we had to draw to fold up to get our square based prism. So that flat plan that you can see there is what we call the development or the net of a shape. So if we had to take this development and we had to fold it back up, if it was accurate, we should then get back to our square based prism which we had at the start. Now, what we're going to have a look at in this video is how to go and draw this plan that we started with here, how to draw out that plan so that when we take that plan and cut it out and fold it up, it gets us to the prism that we need. Now, to start drawing that plan, we need to start with the top view of our shape. We've got the top view of a hexagon there, so we're going to have a look now at drawing the development of a hexagonal prism. Now once we have our top view drawn, the next step is to go and draw the front view of this top view, which you've already learned how to do. So we're going to quickly go and draw in that front view over here, and then we'll have a look at how to go and use the top view and the front view to draw the development of the shape. Now we have the front view and we've labeled both our top view and our front view and now we're going to have a look at drawing the development. Now if we have a look again at our square based prism Okay, if we have a look here, you've got four sides on this square-based prism. Okay, four sides there. Our hexagon over here has got six sides. So if we had to go and draw the development now of this shape, we're going to go and take the length of one side, which for me is 30 millimeters here. We're going to take the length of one side of our shape and we're going to multiply it by six. And we do that because this shape has got one, two, three, four, five, six different sides, all of the same length. So our six times 30 millimeters, which is 180 millimeters, will give us the length of our development. The same as what we've got over here. This has got four sides. And if you open it out, you can clearly see that you, when you've done the development of this shape, you land up with one, two, three, four faces there. Four sides, the four sides are one, two, three, four sides, which are all the same length. And if, you have, if we put it in line with the shape we're about to draw, you'll see that we've got the four faces drawn over here, and then the top of the shape here, or its cap, and then the bottom of the shape over there. And we're going to do exactly the same thing now with his hexagonal prism. And we're going to start off with going and drawing this shape out here, but our one is going to have six faces or six, six sides at the bottom, which will create the six faces. And then we are going to go and draw the bottom of the shape and the top of the shape. So that if we had to go and cut it out and fold it all up, we'd then be able to get our prism. Okay, this one has a square prism, square based prism, but we're going to draw one which will give us a hexagonal based prism. So to start off with, we're going to use this front view to help us out because we need the height of each of these faces and for that we're just going to project off of our front view two construction lines going across like that and then we're going to draw in the start of our development on this side over here the first edge we'll draw that in nice and dark okay and then from that edge, we now need a total of six faces going out this way. Okay, and remember that the length of those six faces are the length of these sides. One, two, three, four, five, six of our sides. So we're going to take 
The length of those sides, we said we multiply it by 6 because of these 6 faces, which for me was 180 millimeters. So I'm going to go and measure out my 180 millimeters. Okay, and mark it off. But the other thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to go and mark off at 30 millimeter intervals. Like that, because I know that each of my faces is 30 millimeters in size. So I'm going to go and mark off 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, and 30 again. And then at each of those points, I can go and draw in a dark line, which then shows the edge of each of those sides. So I'm going to go and draw a dark line running all the way along here, okay, at each of those 30 millimeter intervals. And there we have them. So you'll see that I've now darkened each of those lines going down, and I've also darkened the baseline and the top line as well. That is now all six of my sides, which I've taken and I've flattened out on my page. The same as what we did with this shape, with our square base prism. We've taken all four of the sides and we've flattened them out onto our page. And then remember that the length over here, this length here, that length over there, that length is the same as the length of this side over here. So if that's 30 millimeters, then that will be 30 millimeters. And because this is a prism and it's a regular prism, if every single one of these sides over here are going to be exactly the same length okay so now we've got this drawn out the height of course over here is the same height as our front view and we're also going to add in numbers we're going to start with number one on this side here and remember at the top here we uh, for my numbering i've used the numbers one to six for the top points so that would be one two three four five and six and then you'll see there's an extra one here because of course this corner here has to join back up with number one when we go and complete the shape. So that one over there will be number one as well. Those two number ones will meet. If you have a look at this one here, you see those two corners there. When you fold the shape up, those two corners meet up with each other. So that's why you've got a repeat of number one on the end. And then, of course, at the bottom here, number one and number seven were in line with each other. So this would be seven and then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then of course we go back to number 7 again. Okay, now those faces there only make up the development of the side of our shape. We still need the top part of the shape and the bottom. Same as what we had over here. We had all the sides, but then we also had the bottom and the top, so that our shape, when we put it all back together, that it wasn't, didn't have a hole right through it, that it, had a, that it was closed at the top and the bottom. And we want the same thing here. So we're going to have to go and draw those in. And we're going to, we could draw the top anywhere at the top over here. Okay, attached to one of the top faces. And we can draw the bottom attached to any one of the faces at the bottom here. I'm going to draw my top face over here connected to line 1, 2, and then my bottom one here connected to line 12, 7. Okay, but you know how to construct a hexagon, so I don't have to go through that with you. We're just going to draw in that hexagon shape there and another hexagon shape over here, one for the top and one for the bottom. And that's then our completed development of our hexagonal prism. Okay, the development or what we call the net of our prism. Now, if you had to take this and you had to cut it out along each of these lines here, you'd be able to then fold this up along each of these edges and you'd be able to go and build yourself a hexagonal prism. The same as what I've been able to do here, of course, with my square based prism. But you'll see that on my prism, I've got a couple of extra flaps that I've drawn in over here to make it easier for me to be able to put my shape together. And those, of course, you can just go and draw in on the edges of your development and then go and cut them out 
the same way as what you would do cut the edges out to then be able to go and put your development together to make your three-dimensional shape.